Hello, this is the ideal diode testing setup for charging a lithium ion phosphate battery. I have a, a 1000 watt power supply that produces 14 volt roughly and it will feed into the ideal diode input side. This is the input side of the ideal diode and then the output side of the di ideal diode go into the positive terminal of the battery and the negative terminal of the battery is already hooked up to the uh, BMS for the negative of the battery and the power supply uh, are equipped with a current and voltage meter to tell how much current is going through the, the uh, battery and also, the ideal diode have a ground. The ground is connected to ground to uh, keep the ideal diode uh, turned on. And I also have a multimeter. It's used to measure the voltage drop of the ideal diode between the input and the output. This way we could confirm or calculate what is the internal resistance of this MOSFET. Uh, there are two of these MOSFET in, in parallel. parallel. Uh, earlier I showed that this is the off-the-shelf ideal diode that you could buy for a few dollars. It's a 15 amp and I modify a couple of them, 1 to 25 amp and the latest, the latest one, this one, is uh, 67 amp. And the only modification I really did is to change the MOSFET. The original MOSFET is a D4185 and then uh, the next version is IPD 042P03 and this one, the latest one is IPB 180P04. And if you look at the characteristics of this, uh, the most important thing is the uh, drain to source resistance in milliohm. The off the shelf one is uh, 12 milliohm, and the next one that I used was 4.2, and this one is 2.4. This is probably the uh, lowest uh, resistant MOSFET that is. Uh, that's not expensive so that I could afford it. Uh, the rest of the specs are very similar. And the multimeter right now is showing 13.19 volt negative uh, because the MOSFET is turned off right now. It measures the voltage of the battery backward because we're using the positive lead connected to input of the power supply and the input of the power supply when everything's off is actually go to the negative of the battery and the output of the uh, ideal diode is actually connected to the positive of the battery so as you can see uh, it's measuring the negative voltage of the battery at this point in time and this battery is uh, 200 amp hour. So let me uh, turn on the power supply first and see what happens. Okay, this power supply is turned on. And right now it's uh, charging at 65 amp roughly. 13.96 volt and you can see the uh, voltage drop of the ideal diode is uh, 64 millivolt 64 millivolt for the uh, voltage drop and later on the voltage drop would increase because when the ideal diode warmed up uh, the resistance would goes up slightly. 
So let's measure the temperature of the system we have. Right now the temperature is about 22 volt, 23 volt Celsius. And again, it's uh, charging at 65, 66 amp. And the voltage has climbed to 14.11 volt. So uh, this is a very quick test. Let me show you the results of all the other tests I have done. So this is to charge the battery. I did test to charge the cells itself. So this is a chart to show the charging of the cells. And the vertical axis is the voltage drop in millivolt. So from zero to 700 millivolt. And the horizontal axis is the charge current, which is the constant current charging of uh, ideal diode charging the cells and as you can see uh, the off the shell ideal diode climb up pretty quickly around 8 amps 8 amps it already higher than 100 uh, millivolt and this the slightly, slightly better one is not climbing as high and I could use it to charge all the way to 25 amp and the voltage is about uh, 350 roughly millivolt which is still uh, much lower than the uh, Sharky dial and you probably could hear the noise coming from the fan of the uh, charger and then the latest one I make is this one it remains pretty flat in terms of the uh, voltage drop and go all the way to 25 amp uh, because my cell charger could only go to 25 amp, it cannot go any higher. So I have to charge the uh, battery using uh, the fixed voltage uh, power supply to charge to uh, 67 amp eventually. So this is uh, the data to show that the latest, uh, com the latest uh, modification is uh, extremely good working quite well and here's the table to show the data again this is the uh, 15 amp version this is the 25 amp version and this is the 67 amp version so this is the charging current 1 to 25 for the cell and then uh, I did a battery charging at 67 amp, which is uh, ongoing right now. Uh, this is the millivolt, and from the millivolt voltage drop, I can calculate what is the internal resistance of the MOSFET, uh, two of them in parallel. And this is the power dissipation in order to uh, keep the MOSFET from overheating and the maximum is uh, 8.6 watt which is uh, still manageable at 25 amp. The latest one uh, all these were uh, 20.9 millivolt so I didn't bother to fill in the, uh, the spreadsheet and then starting at 12 amp, the voltage drop is 20.9. And at 25 amp, it's 30 for the cell. And then 
at 67 amp is 70 millivolt for the uh, battery and this way I could calculate the uh, resistance of the ideal diode and look how low the resistance of the ideal diode is at uh, 67 amp and the uh, voltage I'm sorry the heat generator in terms of watt is only 4.69 watt very easy to uh, manage uh, with a pretty uh, tiny uh, heat sink and the reason the battery is lower charging battery is lower than charging cell is because the ideal diode uses the MOSFET and this is the MOSFET uh, this is the resistance of drain to source and this is the uh, current that uh, flows through the drain to source as you can see at 3.5 volt of uh, gate to source voltage at 3.5 minus 3.5 volt and the resistance is uh, 3.5 at low at low uh, current as soon as the current goes up the resistance climb up drastically but to charge the battery because the battery has about uh, 14 volts of gate to source voltage capacity as opposed to just a single cell it's uh, 10 volt and the resistance is uh, only half of that for charging cell so charging battery is a lot easier so uh, this is uh, the data and let's take a look at the uh, temperature of the ideal dials again so the temperature the highest point is about 38 I believe 37 Celsius 38 Celsius and really uh, easily manageable and uh, this tiny heat sink and all the connection would easily dissip dissipate the heat and the voltage drop climbs a little bit from 67 millivolt to uh, 69 millivolt uh, because of the uh, temperature coefficient when the temperature of the MOSFET junction goes up the resistance also goes up so this is it thank you for watching have a good day bye bye